so today we are going to be comparing the themes of nature and power in hawk roosting and Ozymandias. But as always, we're going to revise some vocabulary first. So, think back to previous, the, uh, previous lessons in the year. What is ideology? What do we mean by a person's ideology? And what can you remember about the ideology of the romantic poets? So ideology is a person's beliefs, their system of beliefs. OK, so what did the romantic poets believe? What was their ideology? And our new word today is deluded. So if you're deluded, you believe something that isn't true. So think back to hawk roosting and Ozymandias. How are both the hawk and Ozymandias presented as being deluded in the poems? Because remember, we are going to be comparing them. We need to look at what is similar and what is different. And then finally, why do you think Hughes and Shelley have presented the objects of their poems as deluded? Why do that? How does that link to the message of the poem? So you can pause the video and answer those questions. So what generally did the Romantic poets believe? They believed in the power of nature. If they were one of the religious Romantic poets like William Blake, who we know was very religious, but in a very unique way, they believed that it was only through nature that you could become close to God. For some of the later Romantic poets like Shelley or Byron, who were atheists, didn't believe in God. They believed that nature almost replaced God for them. Nature was what they worshipped. They um, believed in the power of freedom and they hated anything that restricted people, whether that was from religious freedom, the freedom to love and be with whoever you want, the freedom from um, slavery, you know, it's people like William Blake, we you know, it's incredibly against child labour, for example. They believed um, in the power of the imagination and creativity, the beauty found in art. They believed that through poetry, through art, through any of the sort of creative industries, you could become immortal, you know, and think we're still talking about these poets hundreds of years after their death so in fact they, you could argue they were right that they are immortalized in their work so the romantic poets there are some common beliefs and then there are those that are more specific to the two different generations or even the individual romantic poet themselves but considering five of the poems in the anthology of by romantic poets and then both hawk roosting and death for naturalists could be considered to be neo-romantic poets. It's really important to get that solid idea in your mind about what those romantic poets ideology or beliefs were. So how are both the hawk and Ozymandias deluded? Well, they are both they both have a deluded sense of their own power. The hawk thinks he is or it is superior to God and creation that it is the most powerful force on earth, more powerful than nature. And we know that is deluded because he is simply a hawk. He is going to die. He does not have the power over life and death and all of these ways in which it talks about itself. And again, Ozymandias, he believed and he was arrogant in his hubris enough to believe that his works would last forever and that he would be immortalized um, throughout time through his work that he was more powerful than nature and in fact what that it was deluded his kingdom is destroyed um, eroded away by nature over time and eventually so will his statue be and actually it is only because part of that statue hasn't decayed yet that anyone even knows who he was so both of their sense of power is deluded. So why might Hughes and Shelley have presented them as deluded? I think ultimately what they're doing is something similar in these poems. They are showing the power of nature. 
Shelley much more obviously. Nature is presented very explicitly as being more powerful than man. Man here represented through Ozymandias. And Hughes is doing the same thing really, but a little bit more subtly. You know, the hawk is technically a part of nature, but through personifying the hawk, he's almost giving the hawk those human characteristics. So instead it almost becomes this man against nature sort of a poem as well, simply because the hawk is presenting its thoughts as if it was a human. So we see um, both Hughes and Shelley doing something quite similar here. So today we're going to compare how Hughes, sorry I've missed the H out of Hughes there, um, and Shelley presented the themes of power and nature in Ozymandias and Hawk Roosting. So we're going to think about those similarities and those differences. So by the end of the lesson, you will know how to plan, write and structure an answer to section B of the anthology poetry exam and the similarities and differences in how Hughes and Shelley present the themes of power in nature through their use of language, form and structure. So I just want to remind you then about how this section of the exam is set out. So it's the second section of component one of the literature exam. Sorry, another typo there. Um, this first section is Romeo and Juliet. So in the exam, you would have spent an hour writing about Romeo and Juliet, and then you spend an hour writing about this anthology. You have one hour to answer two questions. Sorry, another typo. I don't quite know what's going on with this slide. Um, Section A will always be write about how a theme is presented in one of the poems from the anthology and you'll get a blank copy of this on the exam paper. So it could be, for example, write about how the theme of power is presented in Hawk Roosting. So they'll tell you the poem, they'll tell you the theme. And you get 20 minutes to do that and it's worth 15 marks. Then the second section, you get to choose one other poem from the anthology that has the same theme as the one you have just written about. And you write and compare how that theme is presented in both of those poems. So I would hope in the exam, if Hawk Roosting came up and you had to write about power, you would think, oh, perfect, I'm going to write about Ozymandias because they are brilliant poems to compare because they both use the power, they both use the theme of nature to present ideas about power. Now you are marked for AO3 in this section, so you must write about the context of the poems. That's why we spend every lesson looking at the context of these poems, because you must include them in your answer. So I want you to imagine you have been given the following questions. Read the poem below, Hawk Roosting by Ted Hughes. In this poem, Hughes explores ideas about power. Write about the ways in which Hughes presents power in this poem. And then B, choose one other poem from the anthology in which the poet also writes about power. Compare the presentation of power in your chosen poem to the presentation of power in Hawk Roosting. And the poem that you would obviously pick is Ozymandias to compare. So we're going to imagine those are the questions that we have to answer. Now what you are going to do today is you are going to have a go at creating an essay plan. And when you are creating this essay plan, you need to think about pairs of quotes and the way you write your answer is you have your overview, your first pair of quotes, your second pair of quotes, your third pair of quotes and then your fourth pair of quotes but today we're only going to worry about finding those quotes. So what I would like you to do is look over your notes from the last two lessons and think about how you could pick four quotes from Ozymandias and how you could link those quotes to Hawk Roosting. 
in how they are doing something similar or something different with the theme of power. So you can see that I've done the first one for you and feel free to use this as one of your four pairs of quotes you're going to find. So in hawk roosting, we have I sit at the top of the wood and you can see that I've highlighted um, top there in purple because that's my key word. We know from our annotation that it creates this sense of superiority being at the top of the food chain. Now, I think and I linked this to Ozymandias saying king of kings and he believed that he was the king the king of kings. And what both Shelley and Hughes are doing here is something very similar because they are showing that both the hawk and Ozymandias feel very secure in their own sense of power. But actually, we know through the context of the rest of the poem that they are both equally deluded in that power. They are not as powerful as they think and that power is deluded and it is deluded as a result of their hubris, their, their excessive overconfidence. So you can copy those two quotations out and you can actually explode them, make some notes. How are they showing a similar sense of power? So you can pause this slide and then have a go at doing that. And once you have done that first quote set of quotations, I would like you to find three other pairs. Now, if you are sitting doing this and you think, actually, I can only find two or I can only find three, it doesn't matter. The purpose of this exercise is to think about how can I link the language of these two poems together? And specifically link them based on this theme and here this theme of power so pick something from Ozymandias can you link it to something similar or something different in hawk roosting and once you've selected those quotations you can write them out and make those notes how is the language giving you a similar sense of power or a different sense of power so you can pause the video and complete that task. So tomorrow in your independent lesson, you're going to have a go at practicing writing um, one of those um, comparative mini PEs, but we'll talk um, more about that tomorrow. So as always, we're just going to finish with this final feedback. So how does man's deluded sense of power link to the romantic ideology? So both poems are showing mankind are deluded in their sense of power. Remember, who did the ro or what did the romantics believe was more powerful than man? What did they believe was the most powerful thing? What did they worship? And then which poem do you think shows a more deluded sense of power. So do you think it's the hawk? Do you think it's Ozymandias? And again, explain your answer. So well done if you've got to the end of this lesson. It's not easy doing this sort of activity um, independently, but hopefully you were able to find um, a few links and comparisons between those poems. Well done.